I want to get a little serious because I want to hear your true take on what someone should be doing in this market, right? We've had a few interesting guests on um, where they're saying, you know, AIH is talking about a recession coming in a year and a half. People are seeing their cards drop in value. There were posts from slab stocks that do a great job from a data perspective to see how assets are performing compared to the S&P. So there's that show bidding, et cetera, if that's real, if it's fake, you know, if it's exaggerated, whatever. It's an, what are you doing? Are you buying? Are you hold? Are you in, I need to make sure I'm selling some of my junkier stuff to have liquidity. How are you playing this, man? Um, a little bit of everything that you just mentioned. So I am, I'm not buying anything um, crazy. I'm not buying anything um, like ultra modern, anything prospecty, anything like that, right? Um, I am definitely consolidating a lot, even even at a loss. Um, you know, so people want to know. I posted some, and we'll go through this. I posted some cards that I had in the PWCC weekly auction this past week, and they sold for good prices. Well, let's hope they get paid for. So we'll we'll deal with that in a second. But but let's hope they get paid for. Um, but um, if sure, I think in the high nineties is is uh, PWCC's payment rate. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, listen, it just ended, right? It just ended on Sunday. So, you know, people take their time to pay. I take my time to pay sometimes. Um, but um, most of the cards, you know, let's go a step further. Every one of the cards that I sold, that I purchased last year, I sold at a loss. There were some cards that I sold at a gain, but they were the ones that I bought in 2020. We're talking about like I I I bought a Mookie Betts gold card for like three hundred dollars and it sold for you know like like more than a thousand you know like smaller ones but but like every card that I bought so so what happened was last year I I sold some stuff in in the, in 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 the first quarter end of the first quarter and I had some money and instead of pocketing it. I didn't think it was the peak. I didn't think June of last year was going to be the highest. Instead, I said, you know what? I'm going to buy some cool Jordan cards that I like. And this is a fun way to talk about it, right? Cards that I like. And I bought them. And I wound up buying them basically the peak of peaks, right? I bought it like right at the high. So I'm not immune to this, guys. You know, we get these messages all the time. I bought it the wrong time. I got some sports cards. I got some Tyler Heroes, you know, I'm never going to get my money back. I kind of regret buying any sports card I ever bought. Like we get those messages. We really do. And I made the decision on these cards that even though I'm probably only going to recoup 70 cents on the dollar on these, I'm taking that out. And I did. And it, what's funny is for a minute when the auction ended, I was angry. I was like, how could this only sell for this much? Like I paid 18 and I'm getting 12? Like, how is that possible? Why would it, why, you know, what's the story here? Why, why would I do that? And you realize when I paid 18, the couple sales before it were like 13 and 14. The sales after it was 16 and 15. You know what I mean? And so I really caught like the top. And, you know, it was a run-up. It was FOMO. It was like one of these things. Not to mention. The card's not numbered. None of well, some of them are, but this card in particular I'm talking about is not numbered, and it's one that I happen to like probably more than most people like. It's not one that's being chased. It's not one that's. Is this being... a Jordan card? Yeah, yeah, it's Jordan. Nineties. Nineties. Yep. PSA ten. Mm-hmm. You sold it. I sold everything almost. So that's impulsive. No, it is very thought out. I like because... that card. I believe, well, I haven't said which one it is, but whichever one it is, you're right, I've sold. Um, so, and and he, but what's funny is after the anger, I said, you know what? Let me see what I sold. Because remember, this part of the story here was I sold stuff in March and April and bought this stuff in like June, right? So the money was in the account. I just used them. And I looked at the stuff that I had purchased that, that I sold to, to buy the stuff. And that stuff was down like 60%. So had I – it's rationalization and sometimes we have to do this in the hobby, right? But I sold something and bought something else. The stuff that I bought is down, but it's down 30%. Had I just held the original stuff, I'd be down 60%. I'm going to count this as a win. (laughs) Why why did you sell though? This stuff is – some of the things you bought were sick. 
because I don't believe that that is the best place for my money right now. And I believe that the prices will continue to come down on certain items. I believe that I'm old compared to where the money is in this hobby, right? And I believe that the, the stuff that I collected that I like is four, six, eight years too old for the money in the hobby to like. So the numbered I shit, the PMGs and so on, the stuff that Nat – posts about and makes everybody chase that was when i was in law school you know what i mean that was that was when i was in you know i was not i wasn't i wasn't collecting anymore so my stuff misses that window right so i'm in the wrong couple of years for the chase now in 10 years will those cards be worth more than what i sold them for most likely yes but do i think i'm going to be able to do something with my money in the short term that's better than the decline that those cards are going to see. I also say yes. So then why not consolidate and buy one LeBron exquisite from his 03 year? I might. I might. The, Le the LeBron exquisite's a little bit of a tough haul. Um, you know, trying to get eight, nine hundred thousand dollars together might be difficult. But is that um, what you mean in terms that of that is exactly what I mean? That is exactly. I, I'm. I might be, you know, selling ten, fifteen thousand dollar cards to try to get something that's a hundred or one hundred fifty or two hundred. Sure. From the two thousand to two thousand ten era, you think that's the era that that's the nostalgic? It depends what? what you what you like, right? So so you can go a bunch of ways with it. You can buy yourself, you know, the one of the Steph Curry top cards that's in PWCC's auction ending tomorrow night. Their premiere ends Thursday. You could buy one of those if that's what you like. If you're a Giannis believer and you think his prices are not going to be as high as they otherwise would have been because he just got knocked out. There's some awesome Giannis cards in there. If you're a Mahomes person and you think Mahomes cards are going to go up coming into the season, there's some great Mahomes RPAs in there. You go a bunch of ways. You could also buy a Mickey Mantle. You know what I mean? You could also buy a Ty Cobb PSA 7 T206. And those are not cards that are going to – fall precipitously and if you buy a mahomes um you run the risk not just of injury but you run the risk that maybe his you know his, he comes back down to earth a little bit if russell wilson shows up and shows out and justin herbert takes a step forward and all of a sudden the chiefs are third in that division and maybe don't even make the playoffs what happens to Mahomes, you know, hundred thousand dollars to millions of dollars RPAs then when he might not be that guy? It depends on your risk and it depends on what your belief is in those guys. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. My take on it is consolidate, have the powder dry, because if something comes up that I like, I want to be able to jump on it if there are other people panicking when things get worse. Does that make any sense? It makes a ton of sense. I'm still I mean, it's so hard to time the market, right? You can't. You can't. And I could very well be wrong. There's still a ton of money in the system. Sure. Right? Like re like real recessions come when there's a, a shortage of, of liquidity. I, I still feel like there's a ton of liquidity. There definitely is. There's there's definitely liquidity. There's definitely liquidity, especially at the high end. Um, you know, but it's, it's an interesting thing because with – with you know the current state of the market you have more people attempting to defend it when a year ago no one had to defend it because you would be attacked for attacking it you would be thought silly for attacking the card market as an alternate asset look at the charts look at how much it's gone up everybody's making money everybody's doing well but now you have people coming out with posts like look at the look at this one's down look at this look at these cards look at luca you know you, you have people like the ravel article Right. And it's reasoned and thought out. And, you know, I'm sure the pushback, you know, from the hobbyists will say something like those people just bought the wrong thing. All right. Well, that's 90 percent of the people who got in in the last couple of years. Right. So all of them bought the wrong thing. So thank you all for listening to another episode of Lucas Tigers and Bronze oh My. I wanted to tell you about a new service that we have starting as of today, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So as a part of our partnership with SGC, we got 50 free
submissions every single month. And many of you have taken advantage of that. And it's amazing that we could have the opportunity to 650 episodes, 675 episodes in to go ahead and give back to our community. As people were sending those cards in, they asked, can we send 5, 10, 20 more cards to you guys? We'll pay for it, but we wanted them graded with SGC. You guys know SGC is turning cards around in 13 to 14 business days, uh, have incredible customer service, and their secondary market values are going up day after day after day. And that's exciting for the hobby and exciting for the grading landscape. So we didn't want to just rush into it. We wanted to do it right. And what we did was I relocated here to Boca Raton, Florida. I opened up a P.O. box maybe five minutes away from SGC, and I will be hand delivering and hand picking up the cards. So you don't have to worry about anyone else touching your cards. It will be me and I will update you every step of the way. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to personally pick up the cards from a P.O. box, prep them, new card saver, new penny sleeve, and deliver them to SGC every single Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Well, it lets the stragglers over the weekend come back through on Monday and gives me a day to prep. And it basically gives SGC the entire week to work on grading those cards. Once your cards pop, only then at the end of the process will you be paying for the service. It's $25 per card. Simple as that. And the turnaround times have never been faster. We're hearing right now 13, 14, less than 20 business days. So there it is. 9170 Glades Road, number 135 is the P.O. Box in Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. 9170 Glades Road, number 135, Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. Of course, you could shoot me an email or shoot me a text anytime, and I'm always available. Many of you already have my email. It's Goldberg at gmail.com or my cell phone number 215-519-9154. Reach out with any questions. I could walk you through the process. I've hopped on the call with quite a few of you and I'm happy to do that. Love you, Luca Nation.